This video might not be the biggest, but it could easily be the most unnecessary risk in my career. The smart play would be for me to jump on the UV cam hate bandwagon. Anger sells, and the internet is pretty freaking angry about this video that shows that Eufy uploads images to the cloud while advertising fully local storage. But instead of grabbing my pitchfork, I spent the last few days responding individually to comments and investigating the situation further as much as I could. So with the quick disclaimer that I am not a lawyer, I'm not European, and in no way have I been in touch with, do I work for, or am I being compensated by Anchor or Eufy to make this video, here's what I know. Eight days ago, Paul Moore, who describes himself as a security researcher, posted a video where he uses Chrome DevTools to watch the API commands and responses from the Eufy web interface, and he found that event images were being uploaded and stored on an internet-facing server. Then, last Friday during the WAN show, Linus and Luke got pretty heated about the whole situation, and Linus even went so far as to say that the problem was so serious that Linus Media Group would no longer work with Eufy or its parent company, Anchor. Uh, Cassandra asks, are you guys going to continue working with Anchor over this? Absolutely not. You heard it here first, we're done with Anchor. Now, I watch a lot of LTT and I really like Linus. In fact, the whole first part of this video was an homage to his video about premium 4K on YouTube. However, on this one, I think he misunderstood the situation a bit and that's led to quite a bit of undue outrage from his viewers. So first, I'm gonna talk about the things that I'm certain of, and then only the things that Yuffi and Paul Moore can know. And then after that, we're gonna revisit the segment on the WAN show and break down Linus's hot take. First, I am certain that the purpose of these images is not for Yuffi to sell your data or spy on their user base. Nor is it a data breach, and from what I can tell, GDPR allows for collection of data as long as it is being used for authorized and requested purposes. Paul Moore's video shows two images per event that are accessible via Yuffi's CDN. The first is a thumbnail still of the entire camera field of view, and the second is a close-up of his face that he added manually via the app and tagged with his own name to be able to use Eufy's on-device facial detection. These images are critically important for rich notifications, meaning that without them, functionality is lost. Rich notifications are when a mobile alert isn't just text, but instead has an image or a video preview associated with it. The images in the notification need to be hosted on an internet-facing server without authentication, and they need to be highly accessible in order for the notification speed to be fast. If you wanted to serve those images directly from your home base, you technically could, but you would need to expose it to the internet directly via port forwarding, which would absolutely represent a huge security risk and would be a newsworthy issue. And thankfully, that's not what Eufy is doing. Instead, Eufy generates a temporary link that's good for between 24 and 48 hours on Amazon's content delivery network called Amazon CloudFront. And even though that image could theoretically be accessed by anyone with a link, that doesn't make it insecure or a data breach. The image file name is a long string of random characters, so in addition to knowing the specific CDN where the image is hosted, you would also need to know Paul's user ID and the date of the event. After that, you would need to guess the file name consisting of 63 random characters, which for reference would take a computer roughly 1.6 times 10 to the 101st power years to guess every combination, which is 10 times longer than the age of the universe. In fact, Paul Moore himself has written an article about the virtues of long random strings and their resistance to brute force attacks. But remember, this link is only active for 24 to 48 hours. So to find a valid file name, you would have to get exceptionally lucky. The second thing those images are used for is shown right in the video, and that's generating a list of events and thumbnails with facial detections inside the app. This use is less critical, since it could be accomplished in other ways. For instance, those images could be stored on your phone within the app, but according to Eufy, they decided against that in order to reduce the overall size of the app and the impact on your phone's storage. Eufy could also rely on the home base itself to serve those images, but in order to do that quickly and securely, you would need a not insignificant amount of computing power, and the home base 1 and 2 were designed with cost savings in mind. So Eufy has always offloaded the task of event list creation to the cloud, and Eufy recordings have never been viewable without an internet connection, which is something that I've mentioned in every single one of my videos featuring Eufy products, and it's why Eufy doorbells weren't included in my local control doorbell video. According to Eufy, this issue has been solved with the much more powerful Eufy Homebase 3, and event list generation will no longer take place on the cloud, which in my opinion should have always been the case. But I haven't done any testing to confirm those claims yet. So those are the things I know, and here are the things that I can only speculate about. 
Those links that Paul Moore showed are on Amazon CloudFront, which is a cached content delivery network designed to serve files quickly using higher cost bandwidth and regional data servers. We know that those links expire after 24 to 48 hours, but CloudFront normally works in conjunction with an Amazon S3 bucket, which are cloud servers that actually store files long term. However, only Eufy knows if those images are kept in an S3 bucket or what their data retention policy is. Paul Moore was outraged when he deleted the motion event and then his account, and in both cases, he was still able to access it via the CDN link. But it's expected that a cached CDN version of the image would remain online as long as the link is valid, which is 24 to 48 hours. What we don't know is whether deleting the event or his account deletes it from the long-term S3 bucket. But based on the fact that Eufy has been independently audited and certified for GDPR compliance, I'd guess it probably is. Also, don't forget that under GDPR, Eufy has 30 days to delete any personal information and data from the time of an account deletion or information deletion request. So a cached CDN image active a few hours after an account deletion doesn't mean much. And as I said, it's just expected behavior for these types of servers. So let's revisit those claims that are made on the WAN show. Eufy, a sub-brand of charger slash battery giant Anchor, has been caught okay. sending pictures to their cloud servers without user consent. This is true if consent means clicking a separate consent pop-up, but I can't comment whether GDPR allows for Eufy to use a CDN to deliver a requested feature, which is what I would call implied consent. No yes. cost because you're the product. Anyway. There is no evidence to make any claim that Eufy is selling data or even retaining data longer than required to provide requested services. The files are not only uploaded to the cloud, but also tagged with facial recognition that ties the Whoa. images that ties the images to a user. Facial recognition is configured via the app. The mobile notification includes which user was detected, so it needs to associate the detected face with the name given in the app. Those are all sent encrypted and not in plain text. And that facial recognition image isn't sent if familiar faces is disabled. It also takes a snapshot of the feed before a face was recognized and uploads that to the cloud as well. This is true and necessary for a rich notification as I explained earlier. Other users have tested the same thing and found that the files were uploaded even when they had never used the web UI. This is also true, but unrelated, since the images are used for notifications and are unrelated to the web UI. Further testing by Paul showed that this wasn't the case, as after he deleted his pictures and notifications from the app, he was still able to access the images hosted online. As I explained, we would not expect the cached version of the image on the CDN to be deleted based on account actions, only the underlying stored data that may or may not be on those S3 buckets. No matter what, the CDN image will expire after 24 to 48 hours. Another user discovered that you can remotely start a stream and watch the unencrypted live camera feeds without authentication using VLC. I can't find any evidence of this other than a highly redacted image of a stream running in VLC, which is a feature that Eufy advertises on many of their cameras so that they can be added to third-party NVRs like Blue Iris. Unfortunately, the hard truth is that when it comes to networking and cybersecurity, privacy and convenience are at opposite ends of the spectrum. It is definitely possible to have a 100% secure and private doorbell, but it's not simple. And if you haven't specifically been involved with the creation of your fully local solution, you can be sure that there's a cloud component. Yeah, that means even HomeKit Secure Video, which requires the Apple Cloud, or Unify Protect, which needs a UI.com login for remote access. Every smart home company in the world is faced with a hard choice. Do we make it private, secure, and locally controlled, or do we make it easy? Eufy is not and has never been a cloud-free option, but they are definitely a less cloud option that leverages local storage and P2P to not only increase privacy, but also decrease their cloud costs, which allows them to operate with no monthly fees. I totally agree that advertising no cloud on their website was a big mistake, and GDPR is a tricky maze to navigate, so they might end up with some fines. But your video footage is stored locally with Eufy, and that's a better option than most other companies out there. Burning Eufy now means losing one of the biggest innovators in the subscription-free space. And despite Paul's outrage, I haven't seen a single shred of evidence of malicious, unexpected, or even GDPR violating behavior. Again, I'm guessing that Eufy would have preferred me to not make this video at all and just let the situation quietly pass while their lawyers dealt with the messy stuff. But for better or for worse, as someone who has a slightly higher understanding than the general public, I felt it was my duty to make this video. Thumbs up or thumbs down, at least you've heard the other side of the story. Stay skeptical, and as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.